Welcome to Scoreography, a podcast about the greatest sport on ice, figure skating. I'm Wendy Buskey. And I'm Adrian Buskey. And this time we are talking about the Four Continents Championships 2024. So this is the last big event leading up to the World Championships. And it felt like a mini World Championships. And when Four Continents is really on in the last couple of years, it has been a really terrific competition. It does feel much in the same way that European Championships does, where there's just so much going on. There's so many great competitors. The fields are deep. It makes for an extremely exciting event. A bit unlike Europeans, it didn't have as good attendance. No. Um, it was in Shanghai, China. And for the men's event, the audience really came out. And I think that had a lot to do with the presence of Bo Yang Jin. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. But otherwise, a lot of these competitions had extremely sparse audiences, which was a real shame because there was excellent competition going on here. Yeah, it was really disappointing after having such great turnouts at Europeans and then watching U.S. Nationals last week have all of Columbus, Ohio, apparently show yeah. up, which was really nice to see. This, unfortunately, did not have that kind of turnout, but I do appreciate that it was a supportive audience. So. Even Chris, the ISU commentator throughout, made several comments about how sparse it was. And I wish for more for the skaters that were there. But regardless, it was a great competition. I really do want to start with the men's field, especially just because there was such a deep field and so few men menning. Yeah. So we're so used to these competitions where the men's division just falls all over the place, has super inconsistent skates, has problems everywhere. And there's a few of those in this competition, but overall, the top 10 and beyond were really strong, really entertaining, a lot of fun. A number of skaters that we've seen very inconsistent results from all season showed up very solidly here and made a definitive case for themselves. And it's worth noting that Four Continents this season is essentially the last opportunity for a number of these skaters to appear at a major international competition. Some of these skaters we will see at world championships. Some of them may make their way to the Challenge Cup, which is essentially the end of the Challenger series, but that's not on the same scale of the world event at all. It's where you're going to see a lot of second tier skaters make their way to, although there will be people like Kaori Sakamoto at it, which is just insane. But again, here, the men's competition was a real highlight because it was full of stupendous performances. And I, we should just start right off with the explosive podium winning skates from Japan's Yuma Kagiyama. Yuma Kagiyama came here very obviously with I want to keep stepping up towards the worlds and really making a case for himself to be amongst the favorites. Not that he already wasn't, but just continuing to up those scores and up the difficulty in his programs. And my goodness, did he ever from the short program that now he has two quads in to a long program that, I mean, it was hard to breathe during. It was just spectacular skating at a level where I feel like he is getting closer and closer to those scores that Ilya has been posting. So it's shaping up to be a really, really interesting showdown in Montreal in a few weeks. But for now, we saw a 307.58 from Yuma Kagiyama here combined. That is easily his best for the season and starting to get back towards where he was before his injury. A lot of the conversation we've been having about Yuma this season has been the return from injury, the slow roll in to redevelop his jumping after being hurt and missing a season and trying to find his way to having the full complement of quads in his programs. What we've seen from Yuma in his recovery from injury and return to competition has been a skater who has dived into the refinement process. You can see the work that he's done with Carolina Costner that has improved his choreography and improved his flow on the ice, his artistic presentation. He's always been a terrific skater ever since we first became aware of him. He's been one of the top men in the world, really. But what we've got now is in an even more complete Yuma Kagiyama who has beautiful skating skills. He's delivering varying levels of intensity to vulnerableness, just this wide range of expression. I think his short program here to Imagine Dragons is even more intense than what we have seen from him earlier in the season. Like he's coming into it with force. 
he really just keeps dialing up whatever the emotion he is trying to tap into for each of his programs. He's there. He is present. He is committed. He is giving everything out there. And I think that's one of the reasons he's one of the most enjoyable people to watch in the kiss and cry, because his emotions are purely on his sleeve. You see him sitting in there with his dad and he gets these big scores and I can't even express the joy in his face. I don't know. There is something we were talking earlier today about like, what is it that makes Yuma so special? And the word earnest always comes to mind. He feels like the guy who everybody says they love skating. He loves skating and he is so committed to getting better all the time. I don't know how it's possible, but it's exciting to think about where he might be in two years once we actually get to the Olympics. As an overall skater, I know he's not competing against Ilya Malin in here, but he's going to be very soon. And he is a far more complete skater than Ilya. But Ilya will beat almost everyone easily with his jumps if he can complete like 80 percent of them. So I'm really curious to see this matchup. If you read the interviews that Yuma gave after this event or after each one of the programs, I think in a lot of ways he is there competing against Ilya in his head. I think he is looking at those big scores. He's looking at the things being thrown down at some of the other competitions this season from Ilya. He's not really numerically competing with the rest of this field because no. even as strong as the rest of them are, the end result here is a... 30 to 40 point lead yeah. over second place. It's humongous. Yeah. So Yuma is here mentally competing against, as he stated, Ilya, but also against Shoma Uno and against Adam Simon Fa, because these are the other front runners going into worlds, the other guys that can actually match this number at their best or beyond, you know? So I think Yuma really was in this space trying to prove that he is ready to go into worlds with all weapons firing. And that extraordinary quality of his quad sal, oh my God. which we saw him get something like 4.3 or 4.4 GOE on because it was just magnificent. His free skate is dynamic and powerful and has a wide range of emotion and really just shows off the amount of quality that he has developed in his skating alongside his technical ability. This was one of those events where we definitely thought he was going to win. But he showed up even stronger than we were expecting. And that was a real joy to watch. In second, Shun Sato, who is the guy we keep referring to as, I think you say, the sleeper agent yeah. of, the, of the men's field right now. This guy is really, really talented. He can jump in a way that I feel the word efficient is the best way to describe it. His arms are so close to his body that he just goes up like a spring into the air The aerodynamic quality of his jumps are just fascinating to watch. So fast. I just wish I could get a little bit more emotion out of him. But I mean, he got a 274.59 here. I think that might have actually been a little low. Like it was fantastic skating. It's just I'm waiting for him to have that breakthrough emotional component. So we've seen other competitors like Kalmura refer to having the fear of Shun, (laughs) which is they know that. At any given competition, if Shun really turns on his full array of skating skills, he is a threat for the podium, not necessarily for the top of the podium, but certainly for some place there. And what we saw here was a really strong placement in that silver position. Shun is just a technically sound textbook skater. You know, he has all of the skills. He has all of the refinement. He delivers these super clean, highly effective programs that are very impressive. Like you said, the hole in his arsenal is just that his expressiveness is lacking compared to a lot of the other skaters. I think in one of the previous episodes, I compared him to like Lindsay Thorngren. These are skaters that are typically so good at this competition, not so great for Lindsay Thorngren but are typically so strong with all of their skills, but have just not gained the ability yet to emote and show an identity on the ice. And that's the one argument I always have against Shun is that aspect of him just doesn't come out. He is such a reserved person, at least as we see him present on the ice and in the kiss and cry and stuff like that, that I just want to see him shine a little bit more out there on the ice. But regardless, really powerful skates here. Very enjoyable to watch. And as a part of a pretty spectacular top five here, he put on a show and I was here for it. I really enjoyed it. Close 
behind Shun, we saw the best Junwan Cha we have seen all season. This was a redemptive performance for Junwan Cha. The thing with this guy is that we've known forever that he should be one of the top people in the world. He is a gorgeous skater. He has all of it. He's got the full complement of jumps. He has beautiful artistry. He has all of the cell. There is maybe no more graceful man in this sport other. You could argue Shoma or Jason Brown, but I still think Junwan Cha has that part of it down. His flow is unique amongst all of them. But he's been dealing with injury. He's been dealing with what looked like poor training or poor conditioning because early in the season he was popping axles and just delivering pretty unfortunate programs that we saw in the Challenger series. He only did one Grand Prix event and it did not go well. He did come back at Korean Nationals and performed very well, but with a watered down program that did not have all of the quads in it. He was still recovering from injury and building himself back up. But here we saw what we've been looking for from June all season. Right. He's still watering down to a certain degree, like he's only doing one quad in his short, not two. That's a a hope he has for Worlds that he'll be able to do two there. And yeah, he had a few minor issues in his free skate that held his score back just enough to still land in bronze because he was only less than two points behind Shun. So he was very, very close to that silver medal. But regardless of placement, This was a breakthrough performance for him this season after so much issue around how capable, how conditioned, how well he was going to feel at every event. And here, it wasn't just that he his jumps were back, like his quad sal was back to being his gorgeous quad sal. He landed both of his triple axles in his free skate after having problems with that jump earlier in the season. It was more the level of commit he had, like nobody brings drama like June brings drama. And to both his short program and especially in his free skate to the Batman soundtrack, my God, he is just owning it. And by the end of his free skate, I feel like I'm moving on the couch with him because I'm so like invested in what he's doing. He pulls me in. I just love it. I'm so excited to see him at Worlds. There are some skaters that when they take the ice, there is an immediate, it's like a sensory pleasure you sink into that moment with them and it's just like, oh, this is good. And you know it immediately. I often have that feeling with my Mihara. As soon as she takes the ice, that even if it's not her best skate, that there's something that just really brings me onto the ice with her. That's what I felt from Junwan Cha in his short program. The moment that he started skating, the level of quality, the carriage, the coverage, everything about it, I was just in, I was invested. And that Batman program has been so troublesome early in the season. And here we were seeing the promise of it delivered finally. And it was very engaging. It was involving. It was dramatic. It was all the things that Junwan Shah brings uniquely to the ice, even though he ends up in the bronze position here by just a couple of points. And had he not made some very small mistakes in his free, he would have been in that silver position. You could see for him, he was really happy where he ended up because I think that just the podium was the goal here because he is still assembling a few of those pieces of his skating after this tough season. I think that the bronze was a happy place for him to be because it shows his ceiling is still higher and that he can get back up into those really super high competitive levels. But all the way around, I thought he was spectacular here. Agreed. Moving on to the fourth place position and who was about nine points behind, but also one of the best skates we saw all weekend, at least in his short program for sure, Sodi Yamamoto. His free skate had some problems here and there, but that short program, I kind of want him to keep for next season because we won't see him at Worlds. And I love it. It's so perfect on him and he skated it near flawlessly here. I have been a unrepentant fanboy of Soto Yamamoto this season. He <laughs> and was, last season. And <laughs> last season. From the first time that I saw this guy, I was really taken with him. Yeah, he is not the most complete skater. He's not the most artistic skater. He is just a lot of fun, and I dig his vibe. I like what he brings to the ice. Like you said, short program here, very strong, very effective, uh, so much fun. You can tell in that one that that music suits him just perfectly. And he comes alive on the ice. 
The free skate definitely had some problems, wasn't as strong as we would have liked to have seen, and certainly not what he wanted to deliver here as probably his final performance of the season, but still a fourth place finish at Four Continents after the season that he's had is pretty darn good. I think he can walk away from this season looking at he had a gold medal on the Grand Prix series. He performed very well at a lot of the other events. He didn't get as high up in the rankings as he would have liked, and he didn't make it to Worlds. But gosh, this guy is so good and so fun. So I'm really hoping for a lot more seasons from him because I really enjoy Soda. In fifth, I think maybe the winner of the competition in terms of everyone's hearts, minds, and certainly the Chinese fans was Bo Yang Jin. I have not seen a site like we saw at Four Continents with Bo Yang since Pooh Rain. And if you know, you know, user Han Yu's reign of Winnie the Pooh Bears that would fall onto the ice at the end of his programs. Bo Yang basically saw that in Shanghai this weekend after both of his programs. It was wild and he deserved all of the love. He was fantastic. The Chinese fans, they were here at this event for this man. Obviously, this is the marquee thing for everybody there is to see Bo Yang on the ice. This guy has been in the sport for a long time. He's in his mid-20s. He's one of the innovators of the quad jump. He has been a big impact on the sport, but has kind of diminished a little bit over the last couple of years as you've seen this next wave of really powerful competitors. But what we've seen this year has been this renaissance of Bo Yang, where he has seemed to rediscover his love of the ice, of skating. His jumps look spectacular. His verve, his energy, the performance factor is really high. Is he as strong as the top three or four guys here when it comes to all of those things? No, you know, he doesn't have Junwon Cha's overall flow and quality. He doesn't have Yuma's jumps. But what he does have is a signature style. It's fun. It's engaging. It's energetic. And that audience ate up every bit of it. And so did I. The short program in particular is spectacular. The free skate is still really strong, but there's just a couple of struggles in there. But overall, man, like this was just really good stuff. I enjoyed the hell out of those programs. Yeah. Bo Yang was just absolutely incredible. And I hope we continue to see more of it at Worlds. In sixth, I was thrilled to see Mikhail Shaitarov show back up and continue to impress. This guy is a young talent. He still has a lot of rough edges, but he can jump. This kid is worth keeping an eye on because he surprises me every time. He really has the ups, if you will. When we noticed Mikhail for the first time on the Grand Prix earlier this season, we were impressed with him out of the gate. The judges underscored him, and that has frustrated a lot of fans looking at how solid he was there on the Grand Prix. But he has continued to rise. I mean, looking here at Four Continents, a top six finish for a skater at his level. And I mean, honestly, for somebody from Kazakhstan, which is not typically a big superpower of skating, this is a really terrific showing for this young guy. What I think is actually really striking about him is that he is somebody who is trying to deliver complete programs. He is out there trying to give a higher level of artistry. It's not there yet, but you can see that the effort is there. So many times we have guys that are concentrating on the athletic end and then have extremely flat artistry. And sometimes it feels like they're not even trying that aspect. They're just skate, jump, skate, jump, skate, jump, and just kind of limp and lifeless on the ice otherwise. Mikhail has shown this from go that he is really trying to evolve into that full skater. So I hope that this is really encouraging for him and that he takes this as the sign of that, even though he is a young skater and just kind of making a name for himself here, that he is already impressed enough on the international stage to show up at sixth at Four Continents. And I'm assuming he'll be at Worlds. I'm assuming he will be. I think he is qualified, so he should, we should see him there. Wesley Chu from Canada landed in seventh, came down after a short from sixth to seventh. But this was a really strong showing from him, especially compared to Canadian Nationals, where he won, but the competition was rough. His short at Canadian Nationals was solid, but his free skate was kind of a mess. Here, we saw two really strong programs from him. And I don't know, this was the most committed I've seen Wesley and maybe just the most confident I've seen him. He really seemed to kind of come into his own a little bit here. Wesley has made me eat my words over the last couple of competitions because I was fairly dismissive of him in our preview for the Canadian Nationals because he just has been so inconsistent this season. He really couldn't land jumps. He wasn't strong overall. 
And I just didn't think he was a top of podium threat there. Now, Canadian Nationals was a complete mess otherwise, but he did show up there, did what he needed to do, walked away with that championship. And then coming in here, he could have easily been shuffled down the order by the depth of field here. Showing up at seventh with a 240-38, yeah, that's not a really great score, but his short program was strong and enjoyable. You can tell how much he likes and enjoys that one. He did that very well at Canadian Nationals as well. It was super nice here. And the free skate was much stronger here than we've seen from him any other time this season. So I think that Wesley has actually positioned himself very nicely for that move forward into Worlds and into the next season. I hope this has developed his confidence and we that we just see a greater consistency from him going forward. In eighth, I got to say, maybe one of my favorite performances of the entire weekend, Andrew Torgashev. I mean, this guy had a personal best, thrilled to see it, came in, I mean, at least personal best internationally here. That short program, it's up there for me amongst my favorite of anyone this season. He has just got a thing. And whenever it's on, it is so compelling. We saw him do it at nationals in the U.S. last week. And his short was great. His free skate, not so much. Here he put both together and they felt stronger and more confident. He did dial back his content to make sure that I think he was going for clean rather than big, if you will. Um, so he didn't have any quads. Regardless, eighth place here, really great showing for him. Strongest he's seen internationally. I just want him to keep that short program for next year. I need to see it more. I think that the strategy that he brought in here, and I think it's a strategy. I Oftentimes, Chris, the commentator, was saying, oh, you know, he's going through a quad, but he's stuck with a triple. I actually don't think that's the case. I felt like he went into both these programs thinking clean is better than highly technical here. And I think he was right. He made the right choice in this instance to err on the side of clean and solid programs rather than trying to throw a bunch of quads that he maybe didn't feel confident in. Because if he'd Zamboating the ice, he could have easily dropped out of the top 10. And I think the strategy here was skate clean, get top 10. And that's exactly what he did. I agree. Short program is absolutely terrific. Long program looked really good here, too. Both of these were very nicely performed. And I think that strategy paid off. And I think a top 10 finish for him here at Four Continents is a really strong way for him to finish his season and set him up nicely for the next one. Before we move on, I also want to give a quick special mention to Roman Sadovsky. He landed in 10th here, still had some problems, but this is the best we've seen from him in a long time. So getting to see him really perform and be reminded of how, just how compelling of a skater he can be was really a nice thing. It's always nice to see that Roman is a beautiful skater. He can really captivate sometimes when he's on. His jumps are still a mess, but that artistry and that the shapes that he builds, the things that he yes. does on ice. Nobody else really skates like him in the men. You always wish that he could bring it all together, but still top 10, four continents, nice performances and not a great score, but it's OK because I hope that it sets him up for a better next season. Well, I think we should move on to the Paris competition where we saw the return of two of our favorites, Riku Mira and Ryuchi Kihara. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the big highlight for me going into this pairs event. It's definitely not as deep a field, and there were some surprises here as far as how this shook out. But I don't think there was any real surprise that the top of the podium were the Canadians, Deanna Stilato Dudek, and Maxime Deschamps. We know that they've had a little bit of an inconsistent season. They're typically near the top, but they can have a lot of mistakes and fall. We saw that happen at the Grand Prix final. But this team has so much quality. They struggle a little bit on like side by side jumps every once in a while. Maxime definitely had a little bit of trouble here. But even with the world champion Japanese team of Riku Mira and Ryuji Kihara coming back here, we didn't have an expectation that they'd take the top of the podium. They were coming back from most of a season gone because of a back injury. They only appeared one time really early in the season on the Challenger series. And so we were not expecting them to come in with the full firepower and grace that we are used to with them. So really, Deanna and Max here were just looking to perform to their utmost level and we expected them to take it. And that's exactly what they did. You can tell that Deanna wasn't thrilled with their short program performance because she expects perfection. <laughs> she is a monster, right? Like you can tell that she is out there to win and win definitively. And they did. They won this by eight points, but they want perfection. And you can tell they won it every time, but they still delivered great programs here. 
I thought their free skit here to the interview with a vampire soundtrack was terrific. It's been great all season. There's been, again, little flubs here and there in places, but it was very compelling. I won't call it an easy win here, but it's the one that we expected and they did wonderfully. But to your point, the return of Riku and Ryu is kind of the highlight for us. Yeah, I mean, I am obsessed with Deanna Stilato Dudek, as is most of the figure skating world right now. And they should be because she's a beast. But agreed that Riku and Ryuchi's return after such a long time away was something that was exciting to see their face. Honestly, see their faces on the ice again was just like it warmed my heart. Their vibe, their general presence on the ice is just a good thing to have. And when it's not there, you miss it. So having them back was thrilling. I don't think they were expecting to be on the top of the podium either. I think second here was probably more than they expected because they've had very little time to train these programs. They've only been able to compete the free skate twice. And the short program was new because the one that they had at the beginning of this season They competed once, didn't like it, and this is a new program for them. So the fact that they came in and got a silver here and were only eight-ish points behind Stilato Dudek and Deschamps was actually fantastic for them. I do have that problem of looking at both of these teams' scores against what we saw at Europeans, and it definitely feels a little bit nerve-wracking because you can look at them and say, oh, well, these are winning scores here, but they're really tight now with all of the teams from Europe. So whenever we go into Worlds, I felt like in the beginning of this season, Deanna and Max were like the obvious, you know, the ones that are going to take it. Then we saw that rise of Hassan Volodin come up in the middle of the season. And now we have Riku and Ryuchi back. We saw the Italian teams all take a big step forward at Europeans, especially Bakari and Guarisi. So, kitty paws. Kitty paws. So I don't know. It's really shaping up to be an interesting world championships. And I really don't know that there is a clear favorite anymore. I kind of love that. Riku and Ryu uh, are stylistically my favorite pair of skaters. I love having them back on ice. You know, the musical choice and the free skate is maybe kind of iffy. I didn't really mind it, but I know a lot of people hated it. I didn't like it. Still, the whole presence that they bring on and off the ice is something that I really enjoy. So I was uh, super happy with them. But the big surprise for me here was actually the third place finish of Ellie Cam and Danny O'Shea from the U.S., Because this is a team that has a lot of technical holes, particularly Ellie struggles to land things. They did just win the U.S. Nationals, which again was a pretty solid surprise. Uh, I did not see that coming. I didn't see them being on the podium here. But what we got was a couple of much stronger skates and Ellie landing a lot more stuff than she has before. So they did a pretty good job here. I think the thing that they struggle with the most is definitely the throws. And Ellie still struggled with those here. She did finally land one throw triple. It wasn't a clean landing, but it was landed. She did not fall. And I think that that was the difference. It really pushed them a little bit farther up along with all of those side by sides that they landed. But I think the thing that really won for them is the fact that they are just a cohesive team and they keep showing that more and more. And I agree. I have not been expecting a lot from them this season. I mean, they're beautiful, but I still had all those questions. I think I'm finally starting to see the hype. They're especially their long program here, I felt was easily the best I've ever seen them. They just feel like it's all starting to click. Now she just needs to have more consistent throws. And, and we're looking at somebody who's going to be a contender. And the thing about this team, you can criticize the fact that they do struggle to land those throws and sometimes those side by sides. But at the same time, a lot of other pairs teams over the last two seasons have been out there throwing doubles combinations or even the occasional thrown double. And they've really done watered down junior level types of programs. What we see from Ellie Cam and Danny O'Shea is a team that does struggle to land those elements, but they never shy away from them. They're always going for the harder elements. So I think that speaks well to them. They've said that in their training that they are able to land those things uh, at least somewhat consistently. So if Ellie keeps growing and improving on that into next season, they could be a even more polished, strong team. And I think that they're showing here was promising. Although if I had a highlight free skate here, it was actually probably from the Australian team. 
Yeah, forgive me if I'm misspeaking, but Anastasia Gulebova and Hector Giatapolis Moore, they were really impressive in the free skate. Their short program definitely had some some issues that they were in seventh, but they moved up to fourth almost to the podium here with a fantastic free skate. The short program definitely was a bit lackluster, but they fought back really hard in that free. Honestly, I think that if their short had just been a little stronger, they probably would have ended up in that bronze position. But still, that was an exciting skate. That was super fun. They've just sh shown steady improvement over this season. If there's one thing that's uh, just from a presentational factor I'd like to see them improve is the way that they style Stasia. They're a team that's like 18 and 21, but Hector actually sells as kind of older. When you yes. see him, I always think he looks more like he's in his late 20s. And Stasia just has a very young look to her. And one of her outfits is just, it's so adolescent looking that I find that it, it does not jibe with the way he styled on the ice. And I find that distasteful. So I would like going into the next season to see them improve the way that they handle their costumes and stuff. But they interpret their music very well. And they brought it together in an impressive way in that free skate. It was good stuff. A few teams left a little bit to be desired. I mean, I'm hoping that we see better from them later in the season with uh, mostly speaking of Leah Pereira and Trent Machad, as well as Peng and Wang from China. Both of these teams have shown up really, really well earlier in the season. Both programs for both teams here felt a little bit underwhelming, particularly Trent and Leah. But I think Trent is dealing with a, an injury. To be frank, they didn't really stand out in any positive ways here. They skated and they got their job done. And that was about it, unfortunately. To be fair. Frank, I think that Pereira and Mashad ruined their short program. So that short program to River by Bishop Briggs, they made modifications to it and they softened the program. Like, I think they wanted to create more dynamic changes in it. So they used a different version of it at the first half of the skate that's a little softer, uh, a little sparser, and then changed back into the original kind of halfway through. I do not think it works. The way they changed the elements to kind of soften it alongside that musical thing, I don't think it suits them. I was really frustrated with it. And this team is somebody that we've been looking to scale up, and I feel like they have scaled down over the course of this season. So that was a bummer here for me. I think they're better skaters than what their material is giving them here. But like you noted, Trent is dealing with an injury, and that always has a big impact. Another disappointment here started off strong, but didn't land in the place we'd love them to. Chelsea Liu and uh, Balaj Naj, who were in third after the short program, after a spectacular short program, thrilled for them that they did get a small medal after that, especially after a disappointing U.S. Nationals. But in their free skate, they again saw some problems, especially Chelsea struggling with the jumps, although Balaj did have an error as well. Reading their post-competition interview, they seem really happy with where they're progressing. They didn't even expect to get two Grand Prix placements this year. They did that. That was a surprise. I don't think they expected to be at Four Continents this year. They did. So for a newish team, they're on track. I personally was just disappointed because I can see so much potential in this team. Balaj is such a fantastic partner. Chelsea's incredible in the air. Third triple twist, there is nobody doing it better on the circuit at all. So I personally, I think, just want so much more for them. I wanted to speed up because I'm ready for them to take a step forward. My one takeaway for them at this event is their thrown triple twist in the free skate is, to my mind, the highest throw I have ever seen. I swear he could chuck her through a third story window. She's so far in the air and she just floats. It is magnificent. I do want to hit really quickly, just because you mentioned them, we sort of passed over them. Peng and Wang from China are a team that are kind of on the come up. I think they're a fairly new uh, partnership. They slipped a little bit in the free skate here, but there's a lot of quality to this team. I like their vibe. I like their energy as a team. I don't think that there's a lot to talk about with them here. I, again, I just look forward to them in coming seasons because I like them a lot. That is totally fair and a good call. So let's move on to the women, because this, again, was a very deep field filled with really strong performances, but especially highlighted by what feels like the oncoming current of Mona Chiba, who is turning a season that started off really rocky in the Grand Prix series to something magical since Japanese nationals with her personal best and highest score here overall and a gold 
This competition is just, I think, full of highlights. So many of the women here had really great skates that set them up nicely for coming seasons. There are some disappointments, and we'll talk about them at the end, but Mona Chiba was fabulous here. She was lyrical. The carriage on the ice, her extensions, the way she interprets the music, her lyrical nature in her performances were all so strong. For somebody who came out looking as nervous as she did. She was terrifying. Yeah. The poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of the things I loved in like her free skate when she lands that final jump cleanly and then her face just glows. You just see that relief of like, I did everything I needed to do. Now I just bring it home. She was wonderful to watch here. I was so impressed. It is very exciting to see. She now has the third highest score of anyone this season, only behind Kaori Sakamoto and Luna Hendricks. So her sights are obviously set on worlds and I'm thrilled that she's going to be there in the position coming in after this. I mean, this has to be a huge morale booster and a confidence boost. So Thrilled for Monachiba. Yeah, a lot of women in the world need to keep their eye on her now because obviously Kauri is, you know, the queen of women's figure skating internationally right now. But Mona is making a case for her come up. She's still not at Kauri's numbers or level, but she is a developing skater who brings so much joy to the ice and was wonderful. In second, Chan Kim, who's had a really, you know, mostly consistent season, a couple of not so great competitions. Unfortunately, the Grand Prix final didn't get her on the podium, but this competition really felt like one that pushed her forward again. Again, she's similar to Mona Chiba. She's a younger skater on the come up, definitely solidified herself as the top South Korean woman for sure. With a 20468, that's a great score for her. To be honest, I almost feel like she was underscored a little bit in the short program. I loved her short program. She was definitely underscored there. Yes. Um, But regardless, second place finish here. Fantastic for her. I'm just excited to see her at Worlds as well, because I think she's on the right trajectory to peak there. When we were going into the season and looking at South Korea, we were like, Han Lee came out so strong at the end of last season. Yelim Kim is just this total gift on the ice. We had Young Yu coming back to form and we were like, wow, this is a really wonderful wave of South Korean women. And you had this younger, like just coming out of juniors, Cheon Kim, who was starting to show up really well, too. I would not have expected at the beginning of the season for her to be the one who's consistently been on podiums or near the top of them while the rest of those women have diminished and faded into the West. Um, (laughs) uh, If you can handle a Lord of the Rings joke in there, but she was terrific. She does share the problem with a few of the other skaters where I think that her face is kind of frozen in one expression. and I want her to give more, Yes, but her skating is lovely. She has it all. She just needs to expand on what she's got and grow into her artistry and expression. But Cheon is terrific. In third, Rinka Watanabe made my heart grow three times its normal size. In a good way, I mean, thrilling to see her finally land her triple axel this season. And you could see her watching each of the scores come in after her fantastic free skate where she made one error and just wait, knowing, OK, I'm right on that line. Am I going to get a medal? Am I not going to get a medal? And when she finally got it, the embrace that she shared with Cheon Kim might have been my favorite moment of the entire competition, if I'm being honest. Yes, we have adored Rinka for years. Uh, she is a terrific skater. She's got a more powerful style than a lot of the Japanese women, barring like Kaori Sakamoto. And what we saw from her here was a lot more of what we were seeing last season when she was really strong on the Grand Prix series. That triple axel was gorgeous. And I love when you see a skater who is already an adult in their 20s master or remaster some of those really hard jumps that most of the competition can't do. Yeah, I was thrilled. I just love Rinka. So I was so excited to see her arrive on this podium here. Also showing up extremely well here, Ava Marie Ziegler from the U.S. She was third after the short program, so she also got a small medal here, which I was thrilled for her, her first in a big international competition. Beyond that, having won an HK trophy, there was a lot of expectation as to how is Ava going to continue to do? Is this Was that a fluke? Was it an anomaly? No. She came here. She showed up extremely well. Her short program was stunning. Her free skate, she had a couple of small errors, nothing too dramatic. But what she showed was an over 200 point competition again. And the fact that she showed up fourth in this deep of a field should send a very specific message to the U.S. Figure Skating Association that she needs to be the top alternate for the world championships 
And she needs to be taken very seriously and supported a lot going into next season because she is a threat. So a lot of the talk about Ava with the U.S. Nationals is that she withdrew from U.S. Nationals because it was only a week before Four Continents. And it seemed like the strategy that she and her coaches had was move away from nationals where she could get lost in the mix and not really be the story with what was going on there. And instead focus on four continents where she could make a bigger international presence known for herself. A lot of people didn't like that choice domestically. They were like, why would you skip your own nationals? I think she made a terrific choice. I think this was a wonderful decision from her and her team because this positions her really well going in this next season to have gotten international experience, to have skated this well against a competition as tough as this one was, to come out in top four at four continents here, I think it really helps make a name for her going into next season. And like you said, the short program was dynamite and was the better performed one. But I think that free skate, it's so mature and the presentation that she gives to it really belies her youth. I think that she delivered a performance in that free skate that shows somebody who wants to be a complete mature skater and wants to evolve into the total package. And I was very impressed with it here. I think they made great decisions and I think this bodes well for her in her career. Agreed. I really hope that she spends time in her off season really focusing on building up a deeper technical package for her going into next season so that she can really be amongst the top women in the world because there is something about her that just has that oh you really could be a star and it's that ineffable quality but she's got it and I'm I'm crossing my fingers and we get it from her so in fifth Seong Wee who might have been the strongest technically in this competition Every one of her jumps, I think minus one, was flawless. I don't think she really had under rotation. She might have had a quarter turn or an edge call or two, but clean, fantastically completed jumps. However, completely unmemorable programs. And that's the place where I'm hoping in her offseason, she grows. Yeah, so Young Wee is a talented athlete on the ice. But as we mentioned earlier with Cheon Kim... She can be a bit frozen faced while she's performing. She doesn't quite have that cell. I'd say much more so than Cheon. Much more. Yeah, she has one. And we and we know she has more expressions. We've seen her in the kiss and cry and even yeah. in the stands, like cheering on her teammates. There's a lot more to her than what she's showing on the ice. So I just want to see her bring that whole personal expression. Those programs are dull and incomplete. They don't have enough going on in them. They showcase what she does well, but they need to evolve it. Terrific skater, just needs a little more. Maddie Skizis had a really good competition here. Her short wasn't brilliant, but it wasn't bad. But after such a rough Canadian Nationals, it was definitely probably a relief just to get through that here. But her free skate was really solid, and I was so psyched for her to end up in sixth. I think it was well-deserved. Yeah, I think that a top six finish at Four Continents for Maddie at this point after such a rough season is a big jump forward for her and hopefully a big confidence boost. She seemed much more centered here, much more confident on the ice and happier with everything that was happening. That makes me happy as as a fan watching it. I think she should be proud of what she did here. I also think that it made a very strong case for her to actually get the nod to go to Worlds this year because I know with Kaya Ruder winning Canadian Nationals, there's still outstanding questions as to which one of them is going. I think this probably solidified it for her. Yeah, I agree. In seventh, I was a little bummed to see Mai Mihara, who you spoke about earlier being, I don't know, maybe the most joyful person to watch on ice because she's just divine. But unfortunately, her technical isn't really back up to snuff after being out some of the season due to injury herself. It was still beautiful to watch, but I did feel that lack of energy and push that she usually has. Regardless, she brought back her short program from last season, which is one of my favorites ever. Just absolutely love it. So I just tried to sit back and enjoy getting to watch her and not necessarily analyzing it as much. My Mihara just is my whole heart on the ice. (laughs) She brings me so much joy. I love watching her skate. I love her presence in the kiss and cry. What she brings to the sport is so special. And yeah, not perfect skates here, not the best performance, but you could see that she was pleased with her results because she did what she was trying to do there. 
And I just was pleased to have them. So all, all that matters to me is that I got to see my skate because I just adore her on ice. Same, same, same. Elise Lynn Gracie in eighth, I think, was a bit of a surprise in the best possible way. She also had a bit of a, a rough U.S. Nationals, a little bit of a letdown, even though it's only her first senior season. She has so much potential to use that wonderful P word that we love to use so much. <laughs> but here I thought especially her free skate was messy. She, she definitely didn't do as well as she did in the short. But I could see more evolution of her own personality on ice. So while technically it faltered, I don't know. I feel like I'm starting to see a more complete skater. And I, I'm excited to see that development from her. Uh, again, she's an enjoyable skater who already kind of has an identity on the ice. And uh, even if she's not perfect, she's fun to watch. And she does show a lot of promise for the future. There's a lot to work on for sure to get her kind of out of that mid tier. But, you know, the takeaway here is that as a USA fan, we had two women in the top 10 and four continents without sending our biggest names. So I think that's a win. I think that's terrific. I want to let you talk about who came in next because you love her so much. Oh, yeah. I was really pleased to see Canada's Sarah Maud Dupuis get into the top 10 here. She finishes ninth. Sarah Maud is a skater that we really saw for the first time last year at World Team. And we were just taken with, I don't know, the vibe that she brings to the ice. She just has a warm personality. She seems very open and friendly. She is not a technically complete skater at this point in her career, but she's quite young still. I think she's only like 18. There's some time and space for her to evolve. But I like the character of her skates on the ice. She's not the most graceful, but she does have solid jumps. She had some pretty clean programs here. She moved up from 12th into 9th in the free skate, gave Canada two top 10 finishes. But the other thing I think was just so fun was seeing after the competition that Sarah Maud Dupuis, Elise Lynn Gracie, Malin Skizas, and Sophia Lexi Jacqueline Frank, who skates for the Philippines and was not a big contender here. But the four of them went to uh, Disneyland in China and had like a little adventure together. And I don't know if in general they all know each other very well, but I, one of the things that I love most in skating is international friendships. So <laughs> whenever I see groups of skaters just go off and have these little adventures with each other post-competition, I just love to see that. I think it's a very positive thing for the sport. I love that they get to share those things and it was super fun. And I'm I'm just really excited for Sarah Maud to have ended up in the top 10 here. It is one of my great delights is your delight in international friendships. It's fun to watch him look at Instagram and be like, oh, look at these people hanging out. Isn't this adorable? Yeah. So <laughs> if you want to know something about me, it is that I love international friendships and I love multi-species animal friendships. So <laughs> if you have dogs and cats or skunks or deer or whatever type of critters that happen to be friends with each other, I love that. And it warms my heart. And I feel very similar about international friendships. That sounds very strange, but I swear it's wholesome. It's it just makes me wholesome. happy. <laughs> It is the wholesomest wholesome. <laughs> I know that we, we've we been talking about a lot of positives. I do want to mention two skaters that did not have their best days here. As you mentioned earlier, Lindsay Thorngren, she did not have the skates I'm sure she was looking for. To be honest, I'm a little worried that she may have re-injured herself because of the way she looked in her free skate, especially. They didn't look like her. They felt stiffer, tighter, and it was not a great Thing to see her land in 12th and certainly not expected. But even more so, I want to focus on Hanley. It's such a struggle to have gone into this season with such high hopes for Han and to see those hopes get dashed over and over again. And while it's disappointing for us, it's heartbreaking for her. And you could really see that here that she was going into this competition looking for some redemption after a difficult season overall. And it did not happen here. Uh, she did a little better in the free skate, but it didn't raise her any higher in the rankings. It's a shame. This is a beautiful skater with so much quality who this season just doesn't look as conditioned and doesn't seem to be able to put it together in the way that she has before. It breaks my heart because I thought she was the real threat for the top of the podium this season. And she could show up at Worlds and utterly surprise me. But I don't think that will be the case. No. And it sounds like based on her, some of her post event interviews that she has something else going on in her life that is stressful and not helping anything is what I'd say. And honestly, just as a human to human experience, I hope that she's doing OK and that she can take some time to deal with whatever that is and 
ideally come back stronger and happier because I miss a happy hay and that's her Instagram handle. I know I did it on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's wrap this up with our dance competition, which was strong if awkward. Yeah, uh, there's no way to get around the fact that this competition included Laurence Fournier Boudreau and Nicolas Sorensen, despite the fact that Nicolas is the subject of some really awful abuse allegations. We saw them pull out of Canadian Nationals because of it, with the stated intent of not making the event awkward and some sort of media circus for the rest of the competitors. But they did still decide to come to Four Continents and Skate Canada chose to keep them in the competition despite those allegations. It is a very complex, nuanced conversation to have around whether or not they should be at this event, whether or not it would be fair to remove them, and whether or not it is fair to everybody else to have somebody there who might make a lot of people feel unsafe. That is not our call to make, and it is a, like I said, a very complicated conversation to have. Some people might see it as very black and white, and I respect that entirely. But in this instance, I think the way we will handle it is to just talk about them as they hit in the placements, but not spend a lot of time with them because it feels like a very awkward place for us to leave our attention. So instead, I think we just start at the first place here with Piper Gillis and Paul Poirier, and then we'll move down the list and we'll do the best we can. So Piper and Paul took this by a mile. I mean, I guess I shouldn't say a mile. It's actually only by seven points, but it felt like by a mile. Their free skate, I can't really fault anything. It was as clean as it gets. It was beautiful. It was intense. It was, I think, the best they've performed this Wuthering Heights program that I've seen. They felt freer in it. Their costumes had changed. Their vibe had gelled a little bit more, especially Piper in that free dance just looked like she was so deeply in her moment that it was very compelling. For a program that I definitely am mixed in terms of how I react to it each time, this one I was definitely into just because they were just extraordinary. Their rhythm dance I thought was overscored again. Not that they weren't great. I think that they were great. I always feel like I'd have to defend that. Like I love Piper and Paul, but I just don't love that program. But they saw some issues on their twizzles that didn't seemed to get a ding against them, which was a little bit of a surprise. I honestly felt like I was being gaslit <laughs> during that rhythm dance because they went into those twizzles and got very out of sync in two sections of it. And they looked kind of wobbly and wonky, maybe not enough to lose a level. It looks like all the elements were there, but very distinctly, it lacked quality in this part. The rest of the program was very, very strong. But then the score came up and they had full four levels for both of them and they had really high GOE and Chris, the commentator was like, oh, they look wonderful or whatever it was. And I just sat there and looked at them like we've seen several other teams have little problems like that and get their levels taken down and their GOE diminished. And that didn't happen for Piper and Paul here. And this is, again, where the sport can make people crazy, is that you will have something where at home, some people will see it, some people won't. But though those who do see it and then don't see it reflected in the score are going to sit there and go, well, why did this team just get a gimme on that? Why was there no review of this? Why did they get these really high marks for something that was not as good as other competitors did here? That's super frustrating. I went and looked on Twitter just to see if anybody else was talking about it. I did find several of the people say, why am I seeing this, but the judges aren't? Why is the commentator not seeing this? That's not to take away from the rest of the program because they were really strong. I think I have just struggled with I just aesthetically. I don't like either of these programs. I've been talking about it all season. Everybody has that thing that occasionally you find something that just doesn't work for you, even if you know that it is good. And I increasingly, even though I've seen them do things like on the Grand Prix, where I think of the Grand Prix final, they did that free skate in a way that I did enjoy it. In the end, I cannot connect to these programs and I don't like it. I wish that I did because I respect this team for all of the quality that they bring and all of the brightness that they have as people. But I just keep being left cold by these programs. And I know that there are people out there who find that opinion from me frustrating and i'm sorry i respect that you love this team and it works for you it just doesn't for me they still should have won here absolutely they were the class of the field but i just didn't like it it makes me think of your deep dislike of timothy oliphant hate that guy <laughs> you don't hate them it's no, not because no. <laughs> i mean let me so i'm gonna back this truck up a little bit for our listeners understand that for some reason unbeknownst to either of us especially unbeknownst to Adrian, because he doesn't know why. 
But every time he sees Timothy Oliphant, the, the actor, the, the actor, actor Timothy he was, in, Oliphant. he was in Justified and one of the Die Hard movies. And he was actually in The Mandalorian recently. I actually liked him in The Mandalorian. He's great in the Mandalorian. But in general, he is an actor that every time he shows up on screen, I innately dislike him. And I don't know why. I just really don't like that guy. <laughs> It doesn't matter if he's playing the good guy or the bad guy. I just don't. I don't understand that reaction. I just know that instinctively I do not like this person. And I feel like it's a similar thing here where it's programs where I look at it and go, I know they're wonderful. It just doesn't work for me. And I'm tired of trying to make it work for me. <laughs> I just want it to be over. <laughs> but he really likes you, Paul and Piper. <laughs> I do. You're wonderful. I just don't like these skates. <laughs> I am definitely on the page of the Wuthering Heights program, especially has grown on me. I still don't really care for the rhythm dance, but you know what? I'm not a judge, so it doesn't really matter. I agree. That she, <laughs> I agree that they both absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, won this competition. <laughs> yes. To really briefly talk about Lolo and Nick here in the second place, they had all of the skill and refinement and delivery that you would expect from them as one of the top Canadian teams who has been very competitive this whole season. They were really strong here. They performed very well. They were technically stronger than the rest of the field, even though their free skate lost some energy in its final 30 or 40 seconds or so. They were excellently performed. It's really difficult to separate the feeling of unease and just a generalized frustration around that situation from the skates. No, I completely agree that I don't want to spend much time on this team. The overall sentiment I have is one of, to use your word, deep unease about seeing them there and not knowing how to feel about any of it. We need to mention them just because it is a fact that they were there and they did skate. And that's all. <laughs> just leave it there. In third place, and this is going to be a complicated thing for me to, to look at here because this is a team I love, and they were even Golden Wendy's Heart last week after U.S. Nationals. We love the team of Christina Carrera and Anthony Pomerenko. They got the podium. They are bronze. I actually do not think that is the correct placement for them here based on their performances. They were strong, but they had some problems, particularly in the free dance. There was a moment where Christina seemed to struggle in one of the twizzles and afterwards the rest of the program looked tight and the energy just fell off. You could just see them just trying to make sure that the rest of it was technically perfect, but it lost all of the vibe. I love this team, but there were better performances that didn't score as high lower down in the rankings here. I really think that some of those spots should have swapped around. I want to be real specific in my words <laughs> because I also love Christina Carrera and Anthony Panarenko. But I will be very direct. Marie Jade Laurent and Romain Legac from Canada were robbed. Absolutely. They were robbed, robbed, robbed. Their rhythm dance was exceptional, but one of their lifts received a, was it completely removed or a deduction? I'm not sure. But all I know is it dropped them so low. I believe it specifically it dropped them into seventh after the rhythm dance. It's the same lift they've been doing all season. So I'm deeply confused. If anyone out there that is listening can explain why this deduction happened, I'd really appreciate it because watching their skate in the rhythm dance, I have no idea why they were in seventh and their free skate was my favorite of the entire competition easily. I have a lot of feelings about this. Yeah. So in digging through comment threads and stuff, I saw one person say that they think that what happened to Laurel and Lagak in that rhythm dance was that one of their lifts was given an illegal element that gave them a two point deduction and that somehow erased like seven points off of their score. So if you would look at that, if they had not been given that deduction, even if you're going conservatively like five points more, it would have put them onto the podium in bronze. I'm not the best judge of the technical stuff in ice dance. And we have seen numerous times this season teams get weird dings for things that they and their coaches did not understand. Toshler and Toshlerova experienced that at Europeans. Our fave Finnish team, Turkilish and Versluth, also got hit with that recently. There's just been several times where teams are just getting whole elements thrown away and they're sitting in the kiss and cry with no idea why. And they're going to have to talk to the judges later and be like, what's the deal here? All that I saw somebody say was that Marie Jade's legs were too far open or something in the element. And that wasn't allowed. 
It seems very strange, but Ice Dance's technical elements are so highly specific. They're super codified and regimented so that they can make a highly subjective sport scorable. But that felt like sabotage to me. I just I, yeah. hated it. I was so unhappy with that. Yes. But then they came back in the free dance and just wrecked the place. We talked about in the Canadian Nationals episode how I don't necessarily love the music in it because it's Corpse Bride and it's just not really my vibe. But man, the character work that they do, the inventive lifts, the really interesting tiny little details they litter that program with. They're fabulous. And it was on fire here. It was the best I've seen them perform that skate. We often spend time talking to each other about if we want to bring more people into the sport, what are the programs we would share with them? This is one of those programs. It is so exciting. It's so inventive. It looks like it should be on a stage, as I think how Chris, the commentator from the ISU, put it. And I agree 100 percent. I would buy tickets to this on Broadway. It was so well acted. Like, I, I'm i so in love with it. And the more I see it, the more I love it. So, uh, yeah, I have a lot of emotions. And I am really sad they did not get a bronze medal here. Yeah, I would have words in a back alley with somebody over <laughs> the way they got scored here. And I don't want to take away from either Carrera and Pomerenko or the fourth place finish from Amelia Zingas and Vadim Kolsnik, because those are both terrific teams. Zingas and Kolsnik, we've talked about before, like you really like this team. I can never remember them. We have the benefit of recording this almost immediately after we watched the free dance. So they're fresher in my mind. Zingas and Kolsnik are an extremely talented team. She is so bright and effervescent. And the fact that she came from singles shows and some of the unique elements that she throws I was very lukewarm on their free dance, though, to Beauty and the Beast, because while they do a beautiful technical job, a lot of amazing elements that are wonderfully performed, the music and what story they're telling on ice don't go together. And it feels like four distinct separate pieces kind of glued together in a way that I don't get. So I can look at it and go, yes, you guys are very good. But man, this program is not memorable to me, and I would really like to see better material for them next season. I agree with I want better material for them. I think they're an exceptional team, and I think we're going to see big, big, big things from them in the future. I particularly agree that Amelia's cell on the ice sparkles. She might as well be like beaming rainbows and unicorns out of her. She just has every bit (laughs) of sparkle on that ice. But more so because I was trying to figure out why you don't recognize them sometimes whenever we're talking about them. I've watched it a little bit more critically, I guess, this time. And in their free program, I realized to bring another Lord of the Rings reference into this, it has a Return of the King ending. That program of Beauty and the Beast has four separate endings. It feels like you're getting the end of the Beauty and the Beast suite, if you will, in the music And then it brings it back down and then it does it again. And then it comes back down and then Josh Groban starts singing. And then you're like, this is still going. This is not to take away from their skate. I think it's extraordinarily good. And I think this is the best I've seen them perform that program. But I agree in that I am excited to see what they bring next year because this team just seems to be getting better and better. And especially after a disappointing nationals, I'm thrilled for them here. I think that when we get down into sixth, seventh and eighth, What we have here is a bummer and two really nice stories. So the bummer here is the sixth place finish of Caroline Green and Michael Parsons from the U.S. Because this is a team that won four continents a few years ago, and they've only been slipping down the rankings over the last couple of years at this event and kind of just internationally in general and even at U.S. Nationals. They're an extremely talented team. I love what they bring to the ice. I really enjoy their short program in particular, but they were not on here. There was something tighter and the vibe didn't seem to be with them. That's a good way to put it. The vibe was not with them. The free dance especially felt tight and sort of uninspired at this point in the season. They did it really well, but it felt like an efficient skate, not an emotional skate, and especially in dance. That isn't your friend. You want to show emotion more than anything, really. To kind of swing it towards the upside of things, in seventh place are our faves, Panalim and Ye Kwan, getting a personal best here. This was a huge score I'm for so Hana and Ye. For them. <laughs> so the uh, South Korean skaters, uh, Hana Lim and Ye Kwan, we've been talking about this whole season. You know, they emerged from juniors last year at World Team. 
and have very quickly become kind of a fan favorite because their chemistry on ice, their vibe, the fun quality of their skates, the just the sheer amount of personality that they bring to the ice is just so fun to watch. They are highly enjoyable. When you talk about skates that you would show to a new audience that you're trying to bring into skating, if I was approaching a younger audience and saying, here's what ice dance is, I would bring them Hanalim and Ye Kwan and say, this is who you're looking for. Largely because this is a team that I expect to really evolve a lot over the next coming years and rise up in the ranks. We talk about all the time the fact that ice dance is this sport where it takes years to move up the ranks for the judges to respect the work that you're doing enough to put you higher up on the podium, even when sometimes that doesn't feel like a valid or honest way to handle the judging of the sport. They are still young competitors who have a lot more technical stuff that they can add into their arsenal. But what you do have is beautiful skates that they act to the very inch of their souls. Like their free skate here is the best I've seen from them. They were magnetic, emotional, lyrical, just so good. And when you see that big number come through, it is awesome. And also having a really good competition and pretty much, in my mind, solidifying their place at World. Misato Kamatsubura and Tim Coletto from Japan, they've had a pretty good season, but I wouldn't say it was like extraordinary. But their rhythm dance, especially to Ghostbusters, which is super camp, and I'm so appreciative that somebody super camped it up for the 80s themed uh, rhythm dance. They performed this better than I've seen them perform a rhythm dance maybe ever. And we're actually in sixth after the rhythm dance, dropped back into eighth, but had a fantastic score. And because they have not had as much international success this season, there was still a question as to which Japanese dance team was going to get the world nod. And I really feel like this was them saying, oh, it's us. Don't question this. I think that what's really important to look at in the top 10 here at Four Continents for Ice Dance is that it was almost necessary for every team to get a personal best or season's best to just one of the team that went before them. And looking at what Masato and Tim did here, that Ghostbusters program was so like the kind of novelty act through a lot of the season. And I think it was easy to not take that performance seriously even though it's exactly what we were looking for, right? Like in an 80s themed rhythm dance, you wanted things that were going to be fun in a little camp and hearken to the nostalgia of that era. I think that it was just easy to kind of dismiss that. Here, it was killer. And also, this group is just a little cheeky. They'll throw in elements that I think are just tiny bit suggestive, more so (laughs) than you'll normally see in an ice dance. Here, there's just a particular line, and if you know, you know, the line is, Bustin' makes me feel good, which is in the actual Ghostbusters theme is like a throwaway line that's near the very end of the song, but it's in their edit twice, and the second time, they throw a little hip thrust in in a rotational lift. (laughs) They know what's up, and if you know, you know, right? So I think that's hilarious. And they were really strong in the free dance, too. So I think this is a team that outside of their own country can usually be kind of discounted on the international circuit. But they did a fine job here. I think an eighth place finish is strong. And it made me really happy because they were clearly very happy with the numbers they got. And there were a lot of other nice competitors here. But I think those are the ones that we'd want to focus on. It was a strong competition. I'm still salty about what was done to Laurel and Lagak there because I think they did them dirty because they were absolutely magnificent, but still a lot of good stuff. I'd say that kind of goes for everything in this competition, but I think it were at that time in the show where it's time to ask you the most important question, who is gold in your heart? Gosh, you know, that's such a hard thing. Part of me would go with Laurel and Lagak, but I think I have to go with Bo Yang Jin. He was spectacular on the ice. I loved both his skates. I like that guy a lot anyway. Every time I see him interact with anybody internationally, when I see him in the kiss and cry, he just seems like a stand-up dude. His skates here on home ice in front of an extremely appreciative crowd were fabulous. And just seeing the rain of stuffy is at the end of it. And what an obnoxious <laughs> pile of thousands of those were on the ice. And a lot of Spider-Man, which I noticed, which I thought was fun. I thought he was wonderful. And just seeing that love at home for him was awesome. I agree with everything you just said. 
I'm very torn this time on my gold in my heart because I feel like I have many. Uh, so I'm just going to pick one at random and go with Jun Wancha because Jun Wan was maybe just my personal fave of the competition just because I've been so disappointed in what we've seen of him earlier in the season and been concerned about his injury. And after having a silver last year at Worlds, seeing that is so disappointing. So getting to see him really come through here, seeing the kiss and cry reaction from his coaches looking so ecstatic. Oh my gosh, that was huge. It was so (laughs) cute. So yeah, I guess I'm going to go with Jun Wan Cha with an honorable mention to Andrew Torgashev because I really, really love that short program. That was good stuff too. Yeah. So just a couple of things as we wrap up this episode. One, I want to make a note of the fact that this is our 25th episode. Yeah. So while that's not an enormous number overall, you know, we're in our second season and this season we have definitely been much more consistent as far as getting on top of like all the competitions every week. And so I'm just really happy to say 25th episode. Pretty cool. Uh, another thing is that coming up here, you know, we're going to get into that uh, lull between all of these competitions and worlds. And uh, somewhere in between, we want to do kind of a Q&A episode. You guys have been so interactive with us in the comments, and we've had people ask questions or just fill in your own observations and stuff. But I would really like for you, if you have uh, questions for us about the season so far, about individual skates, anything, I mean, like whatever it is that... What's our favorite pizza topping? Yeah, yeah. I mean, (laughs) but I think more like if there's things you feel like we didn't cover enough, or maybe you've just joined us recently and you kind of want to know our breakdown of some specific skater or routine or something about the season, whatever it is, if we've missed something and you want us to kind of dive into it, if you could go into the YouTube comments or if you go to choreography.show slash questions, there'll be a form there for you that you can also fill it out if you are not going to be in the YouTube comments or if you would rather be anonymous. But yeah, ask us whatever, like ask us for hot takes. I mean, we're not a hot take show. We'll if, be like medium temp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like medium heat. I don't know. My reaction to like Gillis and Poirier might be considered a hot take. But we would love to like just answer questions. If you have questions about the show, about the skate so far, our opinions on anything. Uh, again, we love interacting with you guys, but sometimes it's very one to one in the comments. And I think it would be nice to do a Q&A episode where we can We can share with the group like they always used to tell us in kindergarten, right? Um, So bring it up for everybody by asking those questions in the comments, and uh, we'd love to address those. All of that considered, we've got a little time before the next big comp. Yeah, there's a little break. We're going to talk about the uh, ISU Awards and Art on Ice, I believe, next. We have a few competitions, like you mentioned, the Challenge Cup earlier. That's coming up in a few weeks. So we'll have some stuff to talk about, but we'll also have some additional content to kind of keep everybody warm before Worlds. Yeah. So to keep up with us, Scoreography is available at the, our website, scoreography.show, that has all the links to our socials and to all the places that you can listen and download the program. If you want to follow us online, YouTube is definitely the most active conversational hub, but we are pretty active on Instagram where we are at Scoreography. You can also follow us on Threads is at Scoreography, on Twitter is at Scoreography, and Blue Sky is at Scoreography.show. And uh, as we finish up here, I have a tagline. I have a show finishing catchphrase I want to try out on you. Oh my! Feel free in the comments to tell me how stupid this is, right? (laughs) I've kind of avoided doing something that like this on the show, but I thought of something while this competition was going on. I'm going to try it out, right? So (laughs) feel free to lambast it if it's ridiculous, but we'll try it out here. So for Scoreography, I'm Adrian Buskey. And I'm Wendy Buskey. And until next time, keep your boots on the podium and your ass off the ice. Oh my. Bye, everyone.